I'd like to call upon Eileen Quinn, uh, have her come forward and talk more about what she does and a proposal that you have for a new venture. So please join me in welcoming. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I arrived here in Marmara. Um, well, I left Toronto in 1994 and got on a sailboat, and I thought I was going somewhere with my husband for six months to a year, but 12 years later, we touched a land in Belleville and ended up here in Marmara. And I love that this is called Creative Hastings um, because I think that says something important about our setting. The fact that we're this motley crew of little communities in a very rural area is a source of our creativity. I think sometimes we feel like we need to apologize for our structure. In no way, this is who we are. And I think there's something inherent in a rural setting that um, fosters creativity. Maybe it's the do-it-yourself mentality that you have to have. Maybe it's the... Uh, sense of responsibility we have to one another to make things work. Or maybe it's just that less hectic setting that gives us the time and the space that you have to have to be creative. I actually think it's hard to be creative without a little dose of boredom in your life, which is contrary to how most people might think about it. But anyways, we are very lucky to be here, all of us. Um, so my work is, uh, which uh, I registered my business today. <laughs> the ink is drying. Yes, thank you. So my work is in compassionate music care. Um, I come out of a dual background uh, before I ran away sailing uh, in healthcare and music. And uh, so I bring together clinical and musical skills to deliver music, not as entertainment, the way I've been doing tonight, but as um, a therapeutic service to people who have serious advanced illness and their families. Um, I play and sing live, one-on-one, -on -one, at the bedside. And this is an art, but it's based on sound science. I'm trained to tailor music to the immediate and changing needs of the individual by observing and responding to vital signs, their heart rate, uh, their respiration, facial expression, signs of physical restlessness. Um, and uh, the use of music, uh, if you know what you're doing, <laughs> can help to relieve pain, anxiety, agitation, labored breathing, sleeplessness. It can create a safe context to experience complex emotions. It can foster an atmosphere of grace, dignity, and compassion that supports the search for meaning at a very difficult time. Um, while the primary focus of what I do is on the individual, um, the music may also bring really significant benefit to the people around them, their family members, their friends, their caregivers. Um, particularly at the, as the end of someone's life draws near. Um, and now listeners don't have to participate actively. So it's not like a music therapy session where there's a lot of interaction, but rather they just quietly receive the music. And the body may respond to music deeply, even um, when someone is seriously hearing impaired. We, we think of just in terms of the vibration of sound acting on our eardrums, but it acts on our entire bodies. And you'll, you'll think of that the next time you're at the stoplight and the guy in the next car has a thumping bass. Right? You'll feel it. You may not hear it, but you feel it. Um, so, and even if somebody is drifting in and out of a coma, our, our sense of hearing is our last sense to go, typically, so it can really have an impact. So, while this type of work is well established in some parts of the U.S. where I studied, um, it's really new in Canada. Um, so, I'd really like to get the word out, so thank you very much for this opportunity tonight to do that. Um, uh, and if you are aware of community groups who might be interested in hearing about um, the work, um, I'd be very happy to go and do presentations. So just come and see me. I'm so new, I don't even have proper business cards, but I do have a little one-sheeter I could give you. Thank you. <laughs>